Well, hello, people. How are you today? I had a nice conversation with Mick yesterday, my friend from Australia. And, uh, you know, when you're having just a chat, a free-ranging kind of chat, you can't really delve into everything you want to talk about in detail. We're not rehearsed. Uh, some of the people I follow, they've been expressing their ideas, their frames, their perspectives over and over again for years. And it just comes trippingly off the tongue and it's always to the point. And they know how to listen and when, when to cut in and people know when to pause and let the other guy talk. And We're not expert communicators, so <laughs> it's going to take us time to work that out and, and uh, hopefully things will become uh, more listenable, audible in the future. I, I think so. I think a little practice always helps. Um, I made a joke about the Canadian uh, truckers, not really per se the Canadian truckers, but the event that was called Stop the Mandate. And I just want to make clear that I, I read an article by Glenn Greenwald uh, today that was, you know, shockingly to the point that Western democracies have been, been becoming less and less liberal or more illiberal or uh, exercising excessive state power. And this goes way back. It's kind of, it has been chipped away. You know, when you have... Um, Barack Obama administration um, drone striking American citizen, an American citizen. That's kind of wow. And then the WikiLeaks thing and um, Julian Assange. It's shocking um, what happened there. And I really recommend, I mean, we've been watching this for a long time, right? And we've noticed. And you really should read Glenn Greenwald's article on Substack. And he has the same article on video at Rumble. I'm also going to start putting videos up on Rumble just to have an alternative to YouTube. Not that anyone's watching, but anyway. So, yeah, I'm not talking about that. That's bad. And you can compare you know, all the dictators in the world that the U.S. supports and why they support those dictators or totalitarian regimes or whatever. Uh, the kind of violence perpetrated by the U.S. machine, war machine and policy machine around the world over the decades. Yeah, okay, all of that's criticizable, critiquable. And it's not to say that Russia's better I'd rather live in the United States than Russia any day. I'd rather live in Europe than Hungary, for example, even though, you know, I'm, I mean, Hungary is Europe, but I'm just saying. I'd rather have more democracy than less, more freedom than less. And my point about the stop the mandate thing is comparing reproductive rights to getting a vaccine is absurd. The vaccine thing is about public health and public health agencies and officials and leadership in North America is there to ensure the public's health and safety, right? That's what the purpose is, the mandate. And so if, if they decide, and it's not just some guy in a room smoking a cigar, but if, uh, if we decide and our government decides and our government agencies ascertain that, you know, the, a given uh, treatment is safe and effective and can help curtail or mitigate the worst effects of a pandemic, then it's their duty to see that that happens. And of course, if people don't want to participate, that's okay. But the whole idea is you're doing things as a community to protect fellow community members and also to protect yourself. You're following 
the best advice of the moment. And I really think if you're going to think about this scientifically, if you want to, or philosophically, uh, you should really look at the, um, this book by Karl Popper about, it's called The Myth of the Framework. So this is an audio book uh, only, and it was compiled at the end of Karl Popper's life. But if you listen to that carefully, pay attention when you're listening, uh, you'll understand how complicated it sciences and scientific theories are and the scientific method and there are controversies you know and disagreements and there always will be so when i say that you know somebody who's an evangelical preacher is invoking god and then screaming about uh, the government taking away his freedom well it's true there's a truth element there it seems like the government is chipping away at our freedom. But there's also a belief element there. He believes that he can interpret God's will and God's laws. And his sect of Christianity can tell you the constraints within which you can be a free and sovereign individual human being. So I find that kind of absurd and ridiculous. Uh, maybe you don't. Maybe your sect is correct and everybody else's sect is incorrect and you know the proper way to live. Well, call that freedom. When we talk about public health and safety, we're talking about doing our, implementing our best efforts at keeping our community healthy and safe. And there are lots of arguments to be made that um, the United States and Canada and other supposedly liberal democracies around the world aren't doing the best job of that. And a lot of that boils down to inequality and other issues of the day. Uh, the commons, you know, publicly funded something versus privately funded something, capitalism, uh, you know, whatever. And all of these different angles and arguments are different and they they come at the questions at in different ways right so i was joking and i was saying basically these people are going to throw a temper tantrum forever because mommy is telling them to eat their vegetables so the idea is like don't tell me what to do don't tread on me the government shouldn't impose on my right not to do something if i don't want to do it and, of course, it's debatable whether or not when you're talking about a pandemic that's killing a million people in a country. And, of course, you can believe that that's not true and you can believe the world is flat and so on. But, you know, listen to Karl Popper's book and figure out how difficult and how much work you have to put in to figure out what's true or what's not true or what's truer, you know. Or, or what theory of the day is probably the best theory that we have right now, because it's going to change, you know. And the idea of, of critiquing and falsifiability and, and experimentation and empiricism and observation, all these things go together. And if, they're, if all of them are done well, you can come up with some uh, view or understanding of reality that's fairly useful and practical, actionable. You know, so the idea around the world, I'm talking about globally, around the whole wide world, is that these vaccines are working pretty good and doing what they're supposed to be doing, and that some of the measures that we agreed to take around the world, my community agreed to take some measures, have probably saved some lives. I don't know how we quantify that yet exactly, but we probably could tease, you know, find the data and tease out from the data exactly how many people it killed and what that demographic was and what their 
pre-existing conditions where, you know, well, this has been flogged to death for two years. Anyone paying attention to this has been through this over and over again. But uh, my point was that the people who don't want to eat their vegetables, um, they were free to take planes, trains, and automobiles to Washington, D.C. and have their demonstration and speak out and so on. And there are lots of places around the world that I've been to where you wouldn't be able to do that at all. So America, as Noam Chomsky always points out when he's criticizing the United States, it's still a pretty damn good place, a pretty free society and so on. And the Bill of Rights, things like that, like Glenn Greenwald um, mentioned in his article very clearly, is there to protect us from not only, you know, the, the king or the totalitarian dictator or the fascist dictator, but also the stupidity of the mob. You know, you, you say, look, you have the right to practice any religion you want to, period. So, you know, this is an important thing, right? I don't know about Canada, but wh where's their Bill of Rights? But anyway, um, it's an important thing to understand, right? So, relatively speaking, um, you know, America's a pretty free society, and all of these evangelicals and comedians and entertainers are free to entertain and tell jokes and perform and preach and spout their ideological beliefs. And what tends to happen is, you know, it's a very good technique to say something that's true or truthy or sounds true or reasonable or rational or factual. And then in the next breath, say, you know, tell your belief, ideological belief or religious belief or whatever belief you have that's not backed up by any uh, science or decent uh, reasoning or uh, facts or anything. So it's like, uh, that's the thing with the evangelicals, right? I mean, they're going to say um, women complain about their right to their own, you know, do what they want to do with their own body. And now you're telling me I have to get a vaccine to go get a coffee at Starbucks. It's not quite the same thing, obviously. It's a big stretch. So, yeah, that's true that women, uh, you know, many women would like to have uh, sovereignty over, over decisions they make about their, you know, having babies, reproductive rights and so on, birth control and abortion. Mm -hmm. And it's also true that some people believe that that's a sin and it goes against, you know, God's will and so on. I don't know how you falsify God's will, you know, because every sect can have a different interpretation of whatever holy book you're referring to or mysticism or whatever. So that's the point. Um, they're different things. They're still debatable. You can still write laws about them. A, a society is, uh, can still choose, um, you know, to tell women they can't have abortions. It, you know, or that's just one example. There's many examples like that, right? Somebody says something factual, and then, then in the next breath, they spout their ideological belief or their religious belief or whatever. And it's a common technique, and it confuses people. <laughs> and there's no way you can argue with it. Because I can't argue with your belief, not unless you want to make a good faith effort through experimentation, hard work, and failure to discover what is the truth in the sense that what's practically real and actionable and actually <laughs> exerts some uh, effect in the real world, you know? So that's, that's what I was talking about, not just to take the piss out of people having their temper tantrums, right? Um, Don't tell me what to do, mommy. 
nanny state and then the metaverse basically can you imagine a more horrific nanny state than being in uh mark zuckerberg's 3d uh world you know it's one thing to go on mines and have your little click there and share information or whatever or any social media platform but now it's going to be 3d and there's going to be all kinds of rules and constraints there and and um how free will it be? I mean, when you're sitting on your ass in a room somewhere with, with VR goggles on, you know? I don't know. That's not my idea of freedom. But that's another thing. Freedom, license, and liberty, these are different things, and they can be talked about rationally. And one can come up with interesting factual discussions about them. In, in the context of history or in the context of politics or whatever. So I just wanted to make that clear. Read the Glenn Greenwald article or watch the video. And definitely this Karl Popper book, I want you to remember and go. And I don't know if this is going to work, but um, this book. The myth of the framework, it's really good. It'll kind of, you know, it's, it's, it'll kind of give you the whole overview of the Karl Popper thing. And I'm not saying he's not a controversial guy. I don't think he's that controversial, but he has his, um, uh, he has plenty of people who critique aspects of his thought and so on. But what a great guy. And you'll understand the thought processes are extremely important. Even if you disagree with certain details, the style of thinking that he advocates is powerful and should be understood by everyone on the planet, in my opinion. Okay, so have a great day. Bouliam T, out.